The other day, I was uploading some files to my Google Drive, like I do sometimes, and I noticed this little banner at the top warning me that I was getting close to my free data allocation and encouraging me to give Google just a little bit of money for some more storage. Looking at their plans, these are actually not too terribly expensive, and storage prices are currently at historic lows, so I could even buy myself a terabyte or so for a pretty reasonable price. But you know what's an even more reasonable price? Zero dollars. So using a bit of software engineering know-how, I wisely traded tens of hours of my life and much of the sanity I had left to avoid spending probably fifty dollars. Here's how I managed to store hundreds of gigabytes of my files on Discord for free. If you're like me, you have a lot of files, and you're probably getting pretty close to the free limits for iCloud or Google Drive if you're not already paying for extra storage. But I've been thinking, if you can get a little bit of storage for free, why can't you get a lot of free storage? If you think about it, every social media platform is really just a place where you can upload your files, or content if you prefer, and have other people look at them, right? Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, they're all the same. You upload your files and share them with people. The key part to keep in mind here is that mostly, these companies might set limits on file sizes or quantities per post, but they usually don't limit the amount of data a single user or account can upload, and we can absolutely abuse this feature to get as much storage as we want for free. My first candidate for a platform to steal storage from was YouTube. YouTube lets you upload videos for free, and each one can be 256 gigabytes or 12 hours long, whichever comes first, so this seemed like a solid way of getting lots of 256 gigabyte sized chunks of storage. Obviously this would only work for video files, so I'd need some way of converting all my data, like Word docs, text files, images, etc., to video. Fortunately, somebody smarter than me has already figured out a way to do this with FFmpeg and posted the script for it on GitHub. Storing files on YouTube with this script would probably work, but there were a few drawbacks. Some issues are that it's slow to convert to and from video, it's also pretty slow to upload a video, wait for YouTube to process it, and then download it later. The video file size ends up being several times the size of the original file, but the big issue would probably be compression. YouTube processes and compresses its videos to save storage, which is great for them, but potentially bad for being able to read my data later. Compression could lead to losing some information and ultimately corrupt my files. All of these problems were probably solvable, it would just make things slow. But speed's not a huge concern for me anyway, because I mostly just want to store a bunch of files I don't access frequently. But I decided pretty early on to give up on the YouTube route because I realized there's a much better solution. There's another service that lets you upload files for free. It's called Discord, you may have heard of it. Sure, most people use Discord's text chat and voice chat features to do boring things like play games with friends. But you can also upload files to Discord as message attachments. Unfortunately, there's a 25 megabyte limit, but fun fact, one big file is really just a bunch of small files all put together in a row. So all I need to do is split up my files larger than 25 megabytes into 25 megabyte chunks so that I can upload them. And even though there are different types of files, like text, photos, videos, with all sorts of file formats, when it comes down to it, it's all just data. As long as I have all the original bits of data in the right order, and I know what the original name of the file was, I can chop up any file into tiny bits, store them in Discord, then download them and reassemble the original file later. So I got to work. I created a Discord application in the developer portal and wrote a server in Node.js to handle uploading and downloading files from Discord. I wrote a very basic frontend in React to give me a simple way of interacting with the server. When I want to upload a file, I can go to the frontend website and hit upload like you would on any regular website that accepts file uploads. The files then transfer to my backend server, which splits it up into 25 megabyte chunks, then uploads each chunk as a message attachment in a Discord server the bot has joined. When the bot sends a file attached to a message to Discord, Discord publishes that message to the channel and replies to the bot with the unique ID of that message. The bot keeps track of the message IDs of each chunk and stores them in a database with some extra information about the file, like the original name, size, and format. Later, when I want to download a file, I can send the server the name of the file I want to download. The server can then use the file name to look up which chunks are associated with that file, get the message IDs of those chunks, and use the Discord API to download all those attachments. Then it can put them all in the right order and write each chunk one after another back to disk with the original file name. In this way, we can upload and download files of arbitrary size by breaking them into small 25 megabyte chunks. But there's still a pretty big problem here, privacy. Discord is of course public, so anyone on the server can see the messages and attachments that the bot sends. The easiest way to keep my files private would be to just create a Discord server where the bot and I are the only members, 
and that way no one else would be able to read my data. This would probably work. Although anybody can download an attachment from Discord's CDN, you would need to know the exact channel ID, message ID, and even attachment name associated with an attachment in order to properly download it, which I think is pretty unlikely for anyone to guess on their own. But it doesn't hurt to be extra safe. Even if nobody's in my server right now, it's possible hypothetically, for instance, that the IRS could join later this year when tax season comes around, and they'd be able to see all my sensitive tax documents with my plans to commit tax fraud. I of course do not want this, so it would be good to conceal my data. Fortunately, I can do that pretty quickly. Each chunk of file I encode will be encrypted, then when I read the file back, I can decrypt each chunk before putting it back together. Now, nobody can see what the data I'm writing actually is. If they look at the message attachments, all they'll see is a bunch of random symbols and characters. Now that I had it all coded up, the last thing left to do was to just upload all my data. This is not particularly fast. First, I have to upload the file through my browser to the backend server, which takes some time. Next, the server has to read the whole file, break it into chunks, and encrypt it, which also takes time. Then it has to upload all the chunks to Discord, which takes even more time. I added a status bar so I'd be able to tell if anything was actually happening, because uploads and downloads can take several hours. But ultimately, I did get all my files uploaded without too much effort. Now let's talk about performance. If I had to describe it in one word, it would be... Eh. I did a speed test, and for a 55 gigabyte file, it took me two and a half hours to upload. That's about two minutes and 45 seconds per gigabyte, which is definitely slow, but not actually too bad, I guess. Downloads are a little bit faster. We're looking at about a minute and 40 seconds per gigabyte to download, which again is pretty okay, and probably much faster than this deeply cursed project really deserves. In terms of data integrity and longevity, so far, everything seems good. It doesn't seem like any of my data has expired. It's taken me a couple months to get this all done, and in that time, the first file I uploaded for testing still downloads and decodes without issue. Quick note here, it's a few months later as I'm editing this, and Discord just announced that they're going to change how external CDN links work, because believe it or not, people have been hosting malware on Discord. Now, CDN links from outside of Discord will break after 24 hours, but links within Discord will still function. I'm planning a follow-up video after they make this change because it's possible it'll break what I'm doing here, but I actually think it might not, so keep an eye out for that in the near future. So that's how I'm storing all my files on Discord. Thanks for watching.